Aloha and Happy New Year. Congratulations, we made it. January 1st, 2021. I hope you had a wonderful new year. And today, um, being that it is January 1st and it is a holiday, um, we are recovering from a nice little celebration last night. We had um, a small gathering with a couple of friends and um, just celebrated the New Year's in a sort of a uh, relaxed, laid back way. Our neighborhood was a war zone from the aerials and the fireworks and the black cats and everything else that uh, everybody likes to light on fire, but it was glorious, it was wonderful. But um, at any rate, today uh, is uh, starting day one of 30 days of 30 vids. 30 vids in 30 days, I think is the correct hashtag. And so, um, yeah, I'm gonna start off with a little review of what's going on on the front page of the Star Advertiser, which is the Honolulu newspaper. And I thought it would be appropriate to, um, you know, it, I thought it'd be a good source of, of some information. And uh, so I opened up the newspaper today to see what would be on the front page. And I was actually surprised. Um, while there is something mentioned, the pandemic that is in the air that everybody's really sort of tired of. Um, fortunately, it does have some interesting content that I thought would be worthy of sharing. And so um, basically you can see it says, um, Paradise Lost, an investigative series. Officials let Hawaii's waterfront homeowners damage public beaches again and again. And it's very interesting because it really covers sort of the jurisdiction of uh, <clears throat> basically who or, or the governing body that allows for seawalls and their effects on the beach. And then, you know, there's sort of two, two interested parties here. There's the homeowners themselves for those that purchase property on oceanfront, which I think is a great place to buy property, by the way. Um, but you've got the opposite side is, is the public. And in Hawaii, we have some unique laws that essentially require uh, homeowners are no, not allowed to restrict access to the beach. And so no matter where you buy uh, in the state of Hawaii, if you are buying an oceanfront property, not necessarily for marinas per se, but for any, any oceanfront area, you are required to allow the public access uh, to, the, uh, to the water. And there have been several, actually several landmark court cases that have, that have decided that in the state Supreme Court. Um, but at any rate, we're talking about the damages that's caused from these seawalls. And so if you're considering buying a, an oceanfront property um, that does have a seawall, you know, a couple of things to consider. Um, number one is Mother Nature will never be defeated. Um, you know, Mother Nature was here long before we populated this island and Mother Nature will be here long after we've gone. And, it, you know, it's safe to say that the ocean is going to continue to do what the ocean's going to do. The tides are going to come, the, they're gonna go, the waves are going to crash. Uh, it is just a natural uh, progression of, of nature. But, you know, as homeowners with a vested interest in a piece of property that is fronting the ocean, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's, it's kind of important to have some, some sort of a security. But it's sort of a domino effect. And you can see they've got a picture here. I think this is Mokulea or somewhere along, uh, along the, the windward side. And you can see there's a seawall right here. And the unfortunate secondary effect when we're talking about the two parties with seawalls is it does protect the homeowners, you know, threshold of their, of their land that they, that they own. However, and you can see in this picture here, the beach, the, the degenerative effects that it has both on the beach that's fronting the seawall, as well as if you have any, any neighbors that don't have a seawall, um, it actually causes a, a, a domino effect of eroding that particular side of, you know, the, the edge of your seawall. And so, you know, something to consider. Um, it is a sort of a contested um, issue, which I think is valuable that the Star Advertiser put this, um, you know, on the front page today, January 1st. But, um, you know, I just want to, you know, remind you, if you are considering an oceanfront property, you want to evaluate um, a couple of things. Number one, public access, because that is 
an important component to uh, land ownership on the ocean in Hawaii. And then secondly, uh, consider the effects of a seawall. If you do have, if you are looking at a property that does have a seawall, it's unfortunate, but um, it, it almost has a degenerative effect. It actually, not almost, it definitely does have a degenerative effect on the beach. And so once you put a seawall in place, it's very rare that you're going to have sort of a proper beach. And that introduces all types of, of challenges that homeowners have to deal with. Depending on the side of the island, the North Shore, uh, because of the wave action up there, during, especially during the winter time, they actually have had some, some serious challenges in, uh, in some of the properties on the North Shore. And, you know, the South Shore, not as much. The West Side, you don't see it as much. The East Side, you do. Lani Kai, for example, is a great example of where there have been uh, seawalls that have been built that have unfortunately caused the beach to erode. But at any rate, as a homeowner or someone that's buying property in Hawaii, uh, I wanna just bring that up. It's a valuable consideration to be uh, looked at when you're making a decision as to purchase a oceanfront property in Hawaii. So at any rate, Thanks a lot. This is Hal Wilkerson with Hawaii Property Advisors. If you like my content, I would really appreciate you giving me a like or a subscribe and um, take care. Happy New Year once again. And here's to a wonderful 2021. All right. Take care.